Welcome to the Future of Education podcast. Here's our host, the co-founder of Two Hour Learning, Mackenzie Price. Hey everybody, welcome to Future of Education. I'm Mackenzie Price. Yesterday, Ben Farrell and I talked about how to figure out, you know, the right curriculum for your kid. The idea that kids are unique and there's a lot of schools out there to offer different options and and how to go search for that. Today, we're going to jump more into how AI is being incorporated into schools. This is near and dear to my heart. My school is completely built off of AI, and I'm excited to hear what Ben is doing at the New England Innovation Academy. So we're going to hop into that conversation. Ben, thanks for continuing the conversation. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, great to be back. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about AI. I'll tell you what, it's hard not to talk about AI these days. Um, it, it's kind of there. And we talked a little bit about how you guys... Um, sort of said, hey, AI is coming. Let's go ahead and be open armed about adopting it. And you mentioned that you got your students involved in understanding like, hey, how can we use this as a a tool? What I always say is I like this to be a tool that helps give people superpowers. It's not meant to replace us. It's meant to give us extra help. So can we talk a little more specifically, what are you guys doing? How are you integrating AI at your school? Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, thank you again for for taking the time and, and, and being here with you. So I think like everybody, you know, a year ago, um, this landed with us, on us, next to us, however you want to put it. And then it was, what do we do with it? We had kind of the, the winter break to figure out what, what do we do now? And, you know, as I might have said yesterday, I, I cast no stones in how people have moved forward with this. We have the freedom here at NIA to, with innovation literally in the title of the school, if we can't try and do something interesting and innovative, then, you know, we, we all miss, uh, lose out on that. So, you know, we, I think as a staff and a community, we feel a responsibility to try it out because I know that some of my wonderful peers and other schools just, just don't have that space yet. So w- we sat down with our students in our, we're very small, are, are based around human centered design, which is again, a, a design, a, a way of thinking that at the end the end user, we focus on empathy for the end user and their needs. And it's not what I think you need, it's what you tell me you need. And then I build something that meets that need. And that's, that seems really obvious, but it's, it's, it takes a lot of iteration. So our students know that we, we fall down, we fail, we make mistakes, but out of that process, something really amazing happens. And we utilize that with AI. And I will say just with all of this, this is all aspirational as well. You know, We are falling down and getting back up. Some things are working, some things aren't. But what we believe is that we have to get our kids ready because it's it's here and it's only going to be more a part of their lives. Sure. And if we don't get our if we don't allow for the space in our classrooms, in our homework and learning extensions and everything to have have this there, they're going to be using it anyway. We can't stop it. And if we don't allow students to use it ethically and with some morality behind it, this that's when things can get really bad. That's when things can go sideways. So we talk about it very openly. If you're using it, um, let's say that you're using it in a humanities class, the teacher might say. Hey, you know, if you're if you are using AI in any way to, you know, help with your grammar, take a screenshot of that, have that or have that in the version history and let us know where it is. It's time stamped. We know what it is. If there's nothing trying to be pulled over teachers eyes, um, wool over their eyes, that type of thing. It might mean that we are utilizing it to differentiate in the classroom, you know, and I've. Again, I, I think compared to what you're doing in some of your schools, Mackenzie, we're scratching the surface, but the idea of a teacher using it to help differentiate a, le- differentiate a lesson in math class, you can put in what you're doing and have some really focused, wonderful, different programs for the same class for kids of different levels in that class. We're using it as a, we, we held the space where we had um, something we call neoforms, where we had an MIT uh, professor and leader in generative AI come in and talk to both our school and we invited a group of other schools to come in. And then our students, the collective students came and said, this is what we need. What we need adults to be essentially be brave enough to listen and get out of the way a little bit. And the first recommendation um, that the students came up with was let us use this. This is something we need to learn how to use. So help us learn how to use this new tool, this new resource in, in ways that matter. And so these are some of the ways that we're beginning to use it. And I think it is part of the life of our school. Students cannot use it to just go and say, write a paper on you know World War II, Battle, Battle of the Bulge. You can't do that. And you will 
of course, be docked or and that's plagiarizing or not utilizing something effectively with uh, the appropriate limits. But it can be utilized based upon what the teacher is saying in a way that is helpful for that student. You know, one of the things we're using AI for a lot, obviously, outside of, you know, academic teaching, uh, which is the key, but we do a lot of life skills stuff. And so um, we'll use AI to kind of act as a judge. So like one of the things we do is we um, we always have kids have to argue the other side. So they have to create an argument for something that they totally disagree with, you know, basically 360 arguments. And then um, they have to have uh, AI judge whether they've done a good job of that. Because of course, you know, as anyone would be, if a kid believes strongly in one thing, then if you say, okay, argue the other side, they're going to make it a weak argument, right? And they're going to do this. And we'll say, okay, you've got to have AI can come in and judge whether your uh, argument is strong enough. And you have to have, you know, the AI give a 10 out of 10 on, on that. We have AIs do a lot of grading around you know, kids writing stories. Like, is this a clear story? And what, what, what could make this better? How can we improve on this? So I think AI can be just a really phenomenal tool. And I love what you said about teachers being able to leverage it for lesson planning. I mean, that's just such a basic thing that I think is so important. You know, they can really save, save time, save effort for teachers, provide specific lesson planning and specific information t- for their students that works. Um, that's very cool. Have your teachers been uh, reticent to adopt this or not? I think it's, it's not a command directive from us that, hey, you must use this in this way. So some teachers have been more readily uh, willing and able to utilize it. I think everybody's using it in some ways because, again, it's not something that we're saying no to as a school. And I know a lot of my, uh, you know, my previous schools, my wonderful colleagues out there, they're spending a lot of time on spending time, excuse me, spending time on finding ways to catch it. So we're not, we're, we're, we're stepping away from that, which has been really nice. And one of the things I was going to say before was that the onset, the onset of us talking about this, the professor from MIT, Kathleen Kennedy, who came in, she is, runs the Center for Collective Intelligence, which is a really interesting way of framing this whole conversation. It's not just, it's not just AI and humans separate, it's collective intelligence and what can, what can we do together? How, how do we work with this tool in a really powerful way? And I think that's a way, when we frame it and talk about it there, there's a lot of excitement and a bit of hope and optimism that comes into it rather than Skynet, you know, that, that type of thing. And so it's been really exciting to have those conversations. I do think that, again, some of our teachers use it every day. Some use it in more sort of uh, sporadic ways, but there is the freedom that everybody can use it. And we are continuing to build our policy and, um, on how to use it. And it was interesting that one of my students said to me, who is a huge proponent and uh, has been building out some pretty incredible stuff said, Ben, as soon as you essentially listen, as soon as you put this down on paper and you have your policy in AI, it will be out of date. Like the (laughs) second it's done, it's immediately out of date. So, you know, think about that and how do we utilize it as a living part of what we're doing as an exciting, real, real everyday part of what we're doing and not just a dusty handbook that gets looked at once a year and updated we're already behind the ball that way. So we're, we talk about it all the time and work to build thoughtful, again, ethical and moral ways of utilizing AI. So what are some things that maybe have changed like in the last six months at your school based on AI that you're doing now that you weren't six months ago? Well, I'm having conversations that I'm, you know, when the co- I'm trying to grab onto the coattails as it passes me by with some of my students. One of our 11th graders here is he came to me and said he was working with some other students around this idea, around a, um, a contest they wanted to get into. And they were excited about there's a little bit of prize money and a little bit of like, let's build a resume, that kind of thing. And they told me what they wanted to do. And honestly, my first response was, don't worry about the contest. What you're doing is so much bigger than that context, that contest, excuse me. And it was this idea of creating an AI, generative AI health chat bot that was immediately translatable into 200 languages and that it was the most up-to-date verified information that you can find um, from all the most recent medical journals. And so imagine if you're in a rural area somewhere in the world and you don't have access to good medical health care. This is something you can go and utilize. And they built it. They look like this. This is a real thing that exists right now because our students built it. And so that's changed the way that I look at this. And we have this in our school, one of our founding one of our founders, excuse me, says, why, why do our students have to wait? Why do you have to be, you know, 36 as senior VP of whatever? And then, then you can do the thing. 
Go and do it now. And we want to give our kids the time and the space and the belief in them. And again, as I've said before, be brave enough to get out of their way and have some ethical, moral guidelines around this. And our kids can do unbelievable stuff. They can change the world. This is this generation, there's a lot of pressure on them. <laughs> they don't have a lot of belief in systems and they don't have a lot of belief in that the world can change, but they are the ones who are going to change the world, I believe. And we have to help get them ready for that. And these are the things that we can do. I think some of those, that story is amazing because I, I do think it totally highlights that one, kids are not too young to go do something cool and to be able to create a chat bot that provides health information, all that, you know, one thing and we've said, we've found that's really interesting. Like, uh, my daughter is an example. Who's a senior in high school. She's really obsessed with a kind of ethics and moral virtue lessons that you can get from pop culture. So you're like, okay, well that's kind of a random esoteric type of thing. But one of the things she did was she built a chat bot where parents can basically ask questions about whatever the pop culture kind of entertainment is that their kids into. Um, and you said you've got young kids, so you can probably relate to that. There's probably some show that you know your kids love that you're like, <laughs> yes. I don't know that I really want to binge watch all these shows to know these things. Yep. Um, but you could plug in and say like, what are some of the conversation topics that I can have around, you know, the Gilmore Girls or Bluey or whatever that can help me introduce kind of moral lessons into this. Right. And, you know, all that to say, she built the chat bot. But here's the thing I think is most interesting is that my daughter is not naturally someone who wants to be a coder, right? She's not like, oh, I'm all about computer science. Mm -hmm. But what she was, was she's like, I'm using this as a way to provide a richer experience for parents in terms of this project that I'm working on and doing this. And I love seeing when our kids are like, oh, you know what? If I code a chat bot, you know, and build a second brain, you know, of AI information, which it sounds like your student did too with, with the health stuff. You know, I'm like, how cool is that, that you're really using these as a means towards a goal, right? And so you get someone interested in technology and AI and coding who wouldn't necessarily be doing that. And I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm older than you, but you know, I remember in high school, I didn't even touch a computer until I got to college. It was like the people in the deep, dark layers right. who were probably <laughs> doing computer stuff. And now I like that AI is making technology so much more accessible for people who wouldn't otherwise do it. And that's a huge skill for our kids to get comfortable with. I, I couldn't agree more. And first, I need to ha utilize your daughter's chat bot because <laughs> I was just up in front of the upper school the other day saying, listening to some of the terminology is like I was on Urban Dictionary trying to understand <laughs> to, to try and be hip with the teens <laughs> and, you know. Exactly. So like, that's incredible. But that I think that's indicative of what our kids can do now, that, that there is a method. It's not cloistered in the back in the dark and so only certain people are kind of gatekeeping what you can do. You can go and utilize this right now to have an immediate impact and that you can start to affect significant change in those around you locally, you know, in the region, domestically, internationally right now. And that's so exciting. And that's the thing as an educator that I get excited about in ways that I have not, as you, if we think about these last six months, this last year, personally, and I think for families to think about too, you know, education, teaching is a tough job. It's, it, there's so much going on, but there's so many people that are excited about where we're going because of what's happened in these last six months, in this last year. And it's a little nerve wracking. It's very nerve wracking, but it's also if we can just grab onto it enough and allow, allow us ourselves and our students to go and do it, anything is possible. And that's really exciting. And we, we have to have believe enough in our, in our kids to believe they're, go they're going to use this in really powerful and positive ways. And that's part of our job to help them get there. It, it totally is. Schools need to be equipping students to know how to use AI in whatever it is that they're doing, whether they're doing creative stuff or they're, they're already in technology. I mean, it is so applicable everywhere. And I think that's the big thing is there are still so many schools out there who are just putting their head in the sand about this and just saying, nope, it, you know, AI, if we catch you cheating with it, that's going to be the problem. And instead, we need to show students how they can use it in English, how they can use it in math, how they can use it, how teachers should be using it. That's kind of what I would always chant to parents is tell your school like, hey, you need to make sure that this is a tool that our kids are learning how to use, not just being told don't touch it, you know, for for cheating purposes. I think that's great. Well, I love Ben hearing what you guys are doing at NIA. It sounds like an exciting school, uh, an exciting place to go. And I think that, 
you know, again, even if parents aren't able to to move up to a New England area or come down to where I'm at. We have a boarding program. You have a boarding program. Well, then never mind. Kids can come. Yeah. Maybe I want to come yeah. be a boarder. Sixth grade, six to 12 boarding students and boarding in day and just outside of Boston, Massachusetts in a wonderful town called Marlboro. Amazing. Well, that's, that's that. great. Well, thank you, Ben, for your time with me today. I appreciate the conversation. Thank you. Yeah, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, this wraps up this episode of Future of Education. Again, thanks to Ben Farrell. He is at the New England Innovation Academy. You can always check their website out at niaacademy.org. Also, you can always head over to futureofeducationpod.com. We've got summaries of our different episodes, contact info for our guests, and check me out on social media. I don't know if you've seen Instagram, future of underscore education. There are always some interesting videos and boy, oh boy, do I get some crazy comments. So um, if you want to bring your popcorn, you can check out the comments in future of education. And would love for you to subscribe to get more information on ways that you can help your kids. I'll tell you what, I believe kids are limitless. Our job is to help unlock their potential. So we'll see you tomorrow. 